You're listening to the Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Tommy from the band The Carbons from Kelowna. Tommy, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to the pit. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to finally be able to talk to you. I've been watching and following your stuff. You guys are really kicking ass right now. You've been featured on CBC twice. You've got a whole bunch of music videos out. The music is sounding awesome. I really see like big things in the future for you guys. And I'm really happy I was able to catch you now before you're a giant rock star. So I can say, I knew him when. <laughs> but it's uh, funny. One of your latest songs is called Superheroes, and that's kind of been a theme for you guys lately. And I think that's funny because how I usually begin my interviews is saying to people, I imagine everyone is a superhero and I need to know your origin story. So I need to take take me back. Take me back to when you were bitten by the radioactive spider and belted by gamma rays. You <laughs> actually, you grew up in Quebec, right? Yeah, I did. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Granby, um, just outside of Montreal, and I uh, moved out west when I was 11. And so what was influencing you growing up? And obviously, I mean, moving at a young age must have been a huge influence. And how did you eventually discover your passion for music? Um, yeah, like I remember the first time I saw, uh, you know, a, a musician. It was on TV. I was nine. And I, I'm guessing the kid that I was watching was 11, like about two years older than me. And he was playing drums on TV with like you know it's kind of like an american idol type of thing like I, I don't think they had american idol like at that point yet but uh it was that type of thing and i was like whoa that is cool i want to play drums and uh you know i was telling my mom about it i started like really listening to music um you know uh, i guess with a purpose you know you always listen to music when you're a kid but like i, I think at nine years old i was like starting to discover like, okay, what do I like? What I, what don't I like? And, uh, I realized quickly that there was no opportunity for me to like play drums or pretty much any musical instrument in the town that I was living in. And, uh, and my dad, uh, my parents are split and my dad was living in Alberta and, uh, um, yeah, I just decided to make the move. And I think it was partly because of that. Uh, and then obviously a bunch of other things. But uh, um, yeah, that's kind of where like, the story starts, I guess. And we need to kind of go through influences and influences can be a conversation that could go on forever. So <laughs> just sh shout out some of your favorite artists, favorite bands from over the years Just shout them out. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a big Chris Cornell fan. So like Audio Slave. And yeah. Soundgarden. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm recently getting more into Pearl Jam because a lot of people say that we sound like them. And so I just kind of want to see what, what they mean. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, Foo Fighters are, are big for me. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I kind of grew up on punk as well. So when I was in my early teens, I had a friend who's four years older than me and she made me like... Uh, a mixed CD, like we, uh, you know, I, I'm not old enough really for mixed tapes, but, uh, but we still had like mixed CDs back in the day. And, uh, she made me this mix called, uh, music that will make you a cultured young man. And it had like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was hilarious. She is hilarious. Um, yeah, it had like, you know, basket case by, uh, green day and, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, like a bunch of sublime stuff on there. And, um, and so, you know, I went to Warp Tour with her and, yeah, discovered uh, this band called Atreyu. You must know them. Um, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't listened to their stuff recently, but uh, their album, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, the one with the, the guy that's on fire <laughs> in the front of it. Oh, man, it was so good. I can't and, remember and either. That, <laughs> yeah, and the Butterfly Kisses one. Anyways, yeah, just, yeah, I grew up on like a mix of like punk rock and uh, Led Zeppelin and Bon Jovi. My, my dad like loved Led Zeppelin, loved Led, Led Zeppelin. So, so uh, what age did you start to play? Was guitar your first instrument? No, uh, drums were. Yeah. Oh, so you did eventually get the drums. Yeah, so about two years later, I moved across the country, and I, I lived with my dad in a little town called High River, just south of Calgary. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't play drums at first. Um, the, you know, the school teacher wouldn't let people start on drums. So I had to learn trumpet 
<laughs> so <laughs> I did trumpet for like three months, and then uh, I was like, okay, is, is that long enough? Like, can I play drums now? But, you know, on the side, I was like, you know, practicing. Like, I was going into the the band room on like evenings and weekends, and and learning how to play drums on my own and with like um, another guy who I'm still friends with. And um, yeah, and then like the I think the second semester of grade six or first semester of grade seven, I started playing drums in the jazz band. And so you grew up as a teenager knowing how to play drums. Was it a busy time? Was everybody coming up to you like, dude, will you play drums in my band? Because <laughs> you, drummers are always in shortage. But at the same time, it's hard for us, right? Hard to find somewhere to practice. Hard to, do I bring my drums to your house? Or are you guys all coming to my place? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, I No, not really. I mean, I played, uh, I was really busy with the uh, with the school band. And it was kind of like a small religious town. Um, and um, I was a nerd, honestly. Like, I was a huge geek, like, you know, chubby, like, glasses. My dad didn't have any money. Uh, my mom didn't have any money either. Um, and so, you know, even though I was listening to, like, punk and metal, uh, it took me a while. Well, the other thing, too, is I didn't even speak English when I first moved out. So, um, uh, you know, so... I, I think I made friends like pretty quickly, but, uh, you know, in terms of like finding a band to start playing in, I want to say it wasn't until like I was 13, 14. Yeah. Maybe when I was 14, I started playing drums for like this, uh, Nirvana and influenced band, I guess. So grunge is definitely a part of your upbringing and uh, all of the nineties stuff. You yeah. started playing in bands as a teenager, but at some point along the way, you picked up the guitar. Yeah, yeah. So in high school, uh, my jazz teacher um, got me onto the guitar because he played drums, guitar, and a little bit of piano. And that was the first time that I was like, oh, damn, you can play more than one instrument? Like, you're a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, I don't know why. I hadn't really thought of it before. I mean, you, yeah, know, you grew up yeah. in a small town. And, uh, and I'm like, Oh, cool. Well, if he can play guitar and drums, maybe I should try and play guitar as well. So, um, so I was 15. I bought myself, uh, a BC rich virgin. It's like, oh, wow. yeah, like a really metal, like ugly guitar, you know, like a lot of people <laughs> say how ugly it is. And, uh, and then I had like this, line six spider two with this massive like 500 well it was massive for me at the time like 500 watt cab you know and the whole thing cost me like i don't know eight eight nine hundred bucks or something like that and uh yeah i just saved up my money and and bought whatever i i could afford that um you know would get me that metal tone because i was actually playing like lamb of god and a bunch of like uh well slayer uh, kill switch engage like I was playing that kind of stuff on guitar and that covers our metal influences I wanted to ask you about since you know this is a heavy metal show and I <laughs> wanted to get to that so so those are some of the influences that you have from the kind of heavier spectrum eh yeah yeah so um, I, I mean right before that I was listening to like I was telling you like punk rock and uh, and then I got I think I got like two guitar lessons from this guy and uh he was like he was huge in, into metal and uh he had like a parker guitar like this this amazing guitar and he would shred and he would play like you know um he's the one who introduced me to lamb of god and slayer so he gave me like uh rain and blood uh by slayer i was listening to that and then he gave me like i think a burnt cd or a list and i would like download shit on limewire um, you know, back in the oh, day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the days. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I think 11th hour was like the first song I listened to by Lamb of God. And I was like, Whoa, this is fucking rad. And, <laughs> uh, and, and then I went down the rabbit hole and I think they had just released ashes of the wake at the time. And I bought that CD and I just listened to that on repeat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very influential album, I think, for many mm -hmm. metal artists. And that band in general is just a huge, huge force still going. Yeah. Uh, 
now I need to get into the carbons because when at what point does this band start to form? Yeah, so um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna try to condense the next few years, but uh, yeah, right. you know, I uh, I started or I started playing guitar for this metal band in High River, um, and it was cool. I was like, I was screaming back then. I was like writing like you know metal songs, and uh, and then I went on to university. So I went to uni for a bit. I uh, started this other band uh, in Calgary and uh and then started working um after uh, like once i graduated and you know music's always been part of my life and uh i always wanted to just kind of like you know put in a couple years of work save up some money and then really give it a shot right and uh yeah then about like three four years ago um I started this band and I was like, okay, well it's now or never, man. Like, you know, um, I want to, I want to at least give like the dream a shot, you know? And I started realizing you you can't just wait for it to happen. Like you got to go and get it. And so, yeah. So I quit my job. Um, I, I've been, I've been writing songs for the last, you know, two, three years. And I think I had like, you know, eight or maybe like seven or eight that I was like, okay, these are like good enough to record, you know? And, uh, yeah, got in the studio, recorded two songs and we were like, so thrilled with the, the quality of the product that we got that, um, we hired the, uh, the producer who was just visiting town and, uh, we just like ran into him, uh, you know, kind of by luck. And, uh, so we hired him to come back. So he's, he came back over Christmas. I, uh, yeah, we recorded like August dash in 17 days and then, uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, mixed it over the next couple months. And then, uh, in April we released our first single, April, 2018. And how did you meet Paul? Yeah. So I met, I actually used to be like a fangirl of his old band. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he was in a band called uh, The Bonsai's. And uh, I would go to their shows. They had an album out with like eight, an EP out with like eight songs. And I bought, I either bought that. Yeah, I think I bought the CD uh, or uh, maybe I was listening to it on Spotify at that time. And, uh, yeah, I would go to their shows and like, I would request some songs that they weren't playing. And, uh, I met him and then, uh, his band broke up and, uh, we just had a beer out of nowhere. Like, I forget how we ran into each other again, but anyways, um, I called him up. I'm like, Hey, let's go for a beer. And we started jamming some songs and we clicked right away. And uh, yeah, then we went on tour. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, man. (laughs) So what's the writing process been like for you guys? Is it usually like something you always try to come together to do or you kind of go to your own corners to come up with your own parts or kind of like a balance between the two? Yeah, it's it's different for every song. I'm going to say like some songs, you know, I'll be at home and uh, they just come out in like 10 minutes, right? Um, or at least like the majority of the song does. And then other times, um, you know, I haven't been writing for a while and then, you know, we kind of get in the, in the studio or in the rehearsal space and, um, I make it a point of not really rehearsing. I'm like, okay, let's just, let's just fuck around today and see what happens. And, uh, that was, uh, one of the last songs that we wrote together, um, is kind of like one of the heavier ones, kind of like stuck in your head. And uh, Paul loves it. It it definitely got some like audio slave influence uh, to it. And uh, yeah, that one we just wrote together. Like we just, uh, I started this riff and then I started like humming this melody while, you know, while we're going, while we're repeating this riff. And uh, by the end of the night, I had... Yeah, I had like uh, guitars and the melody and kind of a little bit of a structure. And then I came up with the words uh, later on. 
Awesome. So it's like a natural organic process each, each time, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's, I usually don't have to force myself to write, but I also like, I'm trying to be creative every day, you know, whether it's like taking photos or, you know, just writing like two lines to, uh, uh, you know, some lyrics, or if I'm driving, I'll like talk into my phone. Um, just to I, keep the exercising the muscle. That's right. And also to not lose anything, right? Like you, you come up, like if you come up with an idea and then you don't write it down or you don't record it and, oh, yeah. and then you try <laughs> to remember what it was the next day, like not only can you sometimes not remember, but also it, it is defeating a little bit, right? And so if you yeah. get into the habit of just recording everything or writing things down, then uh, I don't know, it's kind of freeing. It's freeing to know that it's there. And you're just like, okay, I haven't lost it. And it, I don't know, it's, you can either go back to it and see if you can come up with something else or, you know, it kind of frees you to be like, well, if uh, I'm going to write something else today, but if I run out of ideas, then that is there as like my backup, what I came up with yesterday, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I need to get into the name. I just, how did you guys settle on this name? It's really hard for a band to pick a name. And how did this come to you? Yeah, well, I don't know if you remember, but earlier I was telling you how I was a nerd uh, growing up, and I still am. I was just I'm a nerd disguised as a rock and roller, and uh, I uh, I'm like a chemistry nerd, and uh, carbon is the element that unites all living things, and right. you know, and that's kind of what we strive to do with music is to just you know uh, bring as much joy and peace and love um, as we can. Um, and healing, I suppose, uh, depending on the song. And so, uh, yeah, the, the carbons is just a nerdy way of, of saying uh, the living. Right, yeah. And also about representing how like music is the great connector, Yeah, maybe in a way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, uh, you know, we thought about the nitrogens as well, but it just didn't have, <laughs> this, didn't have the same rock and roll, you know, <laughs> kind of spin to it <laughs> the, the strong and nu weak nuclear force no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what's your favorite song to play live right now oh right now that's a good question because i get that question a lot but um it changes so yeah of course it's going to change yeah you putting a time stamp on it is uh is helpful um i've been playing mama acoustic lately and i really like that although paul wants to play the full song and uh right <laughs> you know and i mean depending on where it is in the set list like it's you, you know you can't i don't know you can't play like every song exactly like the album otherwise like why even bother right why why bother like having a show um so i really like playing that one acoustic uh hmm, what else um I miss, we have a song that's not recorded yet that I really love playing. It's called Sheepskin. Uh, well, it's recorded, I'm sorry, but it's not out. Um, that one I love playing. And Queensway. Queensway is really, uh, is really yeah. fun. Like, there's a good story behind it. And every time I tell the story, like, you know, I can see people kind of relating to it and, you know, just nodding their heads in approval. And, and I like playing the songs where I don't have to do too much at once, you know, where like if I'm singing, I can just play chords. And if there's a solo, then I don't have to sing over it. Um, <laughs> like, uh, believe it or not, Summer Girl is like the hard, one of the hardest songs that I have to play because there's like all these little licks in between the, the vocals. And, uh, and so it's not my favorite one to play, although I do love the solo in that one. And it is a really great song. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> so you guys are lucky, lucky enough to tour Australia. And there was a little bit of talk in some interview after that, that you guys were thinking about moving to Australia. And I just want to say, how dare you? Don't, don't, <laughs> do, don't you dare do that. We need more great Canadian artists. And I'll, I'll be very angry. No, I'm just kidding. How was, it, how was it going through Australia? That must have been awesome. Oh, dude, it was incredible. Um, on multiple levels, because... Um, I'd been wanting to go just visit Australia for, um, for years. Um, I, after I graduated uni, I went on this, uh, amazing trip in Croatia. Uh, it was like on a sail, 
on a like a little 20 person sailboat and i made some like long lasting uh friendships out of it and five of them uh live in australia and so uh um i actually traveled in brazil with one or two of them uh after that as well so we've kind of like been keeping uh in touch over the years and obviously like you know uh, oh actually met another one in la and another one in montreal yeah that's right so yeah we've really been like staying connected and uh this whole time you know they've been telling me like oh you should come visit you should come visit and um you know the thing about australia is it's like it takes like i think minimum like 20 hours to get there like if you have a direct flight from vancouver right um yeah. and so i wanted to make like a big trip out of it i didn't want to go there for a week or, or 10 days you know i wanted to try and go for four weeks and i yeah. i love surfing actually so i wanted to you know spend some extra time there to go surfing so anyways i know this is kind of like i had to give you a little bit of a backstory but <laughs> um but yeah so we when we got the tour i was really excited and i you know um not only it was was it our first like international tour but i had also been wanting to go there like just for personal reasons forever and so the whole experience was just incredible you know like just being able to to go and, and to do what you know we're put on this earth to do and then also at the same time um to be able to go to a place where we had always wanted to go and visit and somewhere so far away and you know, and also they, they really appreciate rock and roll over there. And so yes. that, was, that was really nice. Oh yeah. The, the Australia loves music. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you also had a chance, uh, you know, shortly before COVID happened, unfortunately, you guys were, had a tour planned for the United States. You were going to go to San Francisco and back, uh, and then COVID happened. Did you guys have to buy visas for that and everything? And did you manage to get your money back? Yeah. Uh, Yes and no, unfortunately. Yeah, that's kind of thought. See, I was just talking to Derek Hill from Paramnesia. It's thousands of dollars, and they couldn't get any of it refunded. I know, it's man. It was brutal. Uh, you know what's worse than that, actually, is uh, after that happened, we had to cancel the tour. We asked them if we could have our money back, and they said no. I think like a few months later, they the like you know the organization that does the visas or whatever um or at least the one that we were going through they asked us to continue paying our memberships <laughs> and i'm like what are you talking about like we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're in a pandemic we're not even allowed to play in our hometown we're not going to continue paying our membership like you can put our membership on pause and they're like oh it wow. doesn't work that way i'm like <laughs> <laughs> okay well we're not giving you any money because like we can't use it like we i don't know it was so crazy so i mean yeah many many people have said that they all think it's just a giant money grab and a scam and i'm I'm trying to get to the bottom of it right now i'm trying to find people to talk to me about it oh the visa application yeah the visa thing it's it's i don't know it's pretty expensive considering like I don't know how long would it take somebody to go through that paperwork. I'm just thinking like it's really four or five pages of paperwork. Uh, you know, a lot of it is a lot of it's just the addresses and stuff like that. And yeah, like I think the minimum, if you're a three piece band, it was costing us four seventy us just for the application. And then it was an extra 130. I want to no, Yeah. A hundred and, 50 let's say plus 30 dollars for extra members so yeah i mean if you're even a three-piece band like it's not a big band there's bands out there that are like you know seven eight members yeah for us it was like six to seven hundred dollars us and i mean yeah there's not really much work that goes into it like somebody has to receive the the application process the payment and then have a look at it maybe make sure that we're not criminals but we don't even have to (laughs) submit anything about that like i think yeah maybe they have to go do that so i don't know maybe it should cost 200 bucks to pay for everybody's time but uh yeah 700 definitely seems a little stiff 
Definitely. And I've seen some really creative uh, people who try to get around this. Bands have gone so far as to go across the border saying they're going on vacation. Then they show up to a big, big music store and they buy all of the equipment they need on a credit card and then do the show and return it all the next day. No It's crazy. Way. that Yeah, the lengths that people go to is pretty extreme. Yeah. Yeah, we've but. tried to, you know, we've tried to do it uh, properly um, every time because right. we don't want, you know, we, we don't want to get banned because obviously there's a yeah. big, big market there. And if, you know, if we do get signed or if, or if we just decide to do it on our own and we manage to book like a massive tour, we don't want to get to the border and have them be like, oh yeah, remember like five years ago when you uh, lied uh, to we, us? Yeah, when you <laughs> lied to us, like, yeah, you can't come in. And you can't capitalize on all this work that you've been doing for the last five years. It would be a terrible position for you guys to be in. And uh, hopefully that will never be an issue. Yeah. M- moving forward for you guys, there must be a lot on the horizon. I know you're planning. I mean, you got Carol now. You you, you have Carol. <laughs> Let's talk about Carol. This is your guys' new bus that you got. This has got to be a huge step up from touring in a Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, we did tour in a in a Dodge Caravan for a while too, and uh, yeah, the bus is uh, is incredible. Um, we're uh, we're gonna get some beds made in it uh, pretty soon. But the no cool way. thing the cool thing about Carol, as you must know, but maybe your audience doesn't know, um, is that it's a stage. It's our own venue, mm-hmm. and so. Um, yeah we just we feel like revitalized and you know um yeah just uh yeah uh, we just feel like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing again instead of like sitting at home and you know i don't know we were creating music and we were putting out songs for the last eight to ten months um and that was good and all but you know seeing people in front of you smiling and dancing and and singing like Nothing beats that. I that's one thing I I've you know realized this year is yeah, writing songs makes me happy, but um, it's one part of the equation. And, and playing the music to the people and getting that energy given back to you makes you realize w- why you struggled through all of the things that you've gone through. I mean, it's for the, for a band, sometimes the simplest thing can have a million obstacles in the way. And to go through all that, all the patience that you'd have, all the determination you'd have, putting out the album, putting out the music videos, doing the tours, it must be nice to finally have that energy coming back to you. Oh, man. Yeah, it's great. Like, um, I haven't asked them if it's okay that I tell the story, but uh, um, I'm not going to, you know, say anybody's names or anything, but... We can always uh, edit it out later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, a couple weeks ago, we played a show um, for this 19th birthday. And, um, you know, we find out before the show that they, uh, they want us to play this, this specific cover because the, the guy's father died um, when he was young, when he was like 10 years old. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, yeah, no problem. So I learned the song and I played it. And at the show, they tell us that this was his first birthday that he celebrated since he was 10 years old what? because his dad died on his birthday. Oh my God, dude. I kid you not. <laughs> I was like, Holy crap. Like, yeah, we're, this is, we're part of this guy's healing process now. Like this is what just happened tonight. Like, you know, we played for two hours. We did two sets. Everybody's dancing. He's losing his mind. Uh, he's like, you know, he's got all his, his friends there and his family and, uh, he's just dancing and, you know, he's like, Oh man, play voodoo child. I love that song. And so we play it and <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, just the happiest guy I've ever seen. And then his mom tells us this and I just, I was floored. I didn't know what to say, but I, in my head, I was thinking like, we're exactly where we need to be and we're doing exactly what we need to be doing. Yes. When you realize that you're a a dream figure in someone else's dream, it's pretty, uh, and powerful, powerful experience. I need to ask you, This is kind of a staple question that I always throw out to people, and it's kind of corny, but I still like to ask it. 
What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Oh, yeah. Um, I would say work harder than anyone around you and love the process. So whatever your, your work process is or your, the steps that you're taking to achieve whatever you're trying to achieve, just fall in love with that process and then do it every day. And then if you see somebody working harder than you, find out how, wh- how they're doing it, why they're doing it, and then work harder than them if you can. And if you can't, then you know, try and get them on your team. Yes. Wise words from somebody who knows everybody. Is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? Um, yeah. If you want to know more about Carol, uh, check out the carbons.ca. Um, and, uh, we're going across Canada next month. (laughs) So we're hoping to see a lot more faces. Awesome. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Tommy from the band The Carbons from Kelowna, BC. If you haven't checked these guys out yet, you're really, really doing yourself a disservice. Their music is really good, and I'm really happy that I was able to catch him before he becomes a huge rock star, as he's inevitably going to be. Tom, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. You're very welcome, man.